Now, Today I'm going to tell you about the uh, connection between the climate changes and development. For many years, until about 20 years ago, people thought that these two subjects had nothing to do with each other. But fortunately, for the last 20 years, thanks to the efforts of the French Agency for Development, partly people understood that the two subjects were connected because the main victims of uh, climate changes will be southern countries and they, uh, their development will not be possible if they don't become aware of uh, their capacity to adjust to climate changes and also reduce their own greenhouse effect gas emissions. On this picture, we see a picture showing agroforestry in Quito, in Ecuador. It's just one example. It's a uh, the project where the development is uh, sustainable, which means that we have to address the economic, social, but also climatic uh, issue. On the second slide, come the, from him come the World Development Report in 2010, we see that the countries vulnerable to uh, extreme climatic events, which will increase because of climate uh, deregulation, are southern countries. So it's very unfair, really. The impact of uh, climate changes are going to be distributed in an unfair manner. The victims will be southern countries, and they are facing a major problem how to adjust to the climate changes. Most countries think that the way their economies and lives adapt to climate changes is the priority much more than the, the reduction of greenhouse effect gas emissions. So why is this problem vital for southern countries? Because thanks to the last IPCC report, we know that the, the whole planet has embarked on a pathway which is absolutely catastrophic. If we continue business as usual, if we continue down the path where we have embarked, we should reach a temperature increase uh, on average over the, the Earth of uh, several degrees by the end of this uh, century. We have to compare the temperature with the temperature that we had before the industrial era. The industrial era was that time when our agricultural societies were replaced by industrial societies based on uh, fossil fuel combustion and carbon gas emissions, societies which therefore emitted large quantities of greenhouse effect gases. At the beginning of the uh, industrial era, the average temperature on the Earth was plus 15 degrees. And specialists say that if we go above 17 degrees, we are going to face huge difficulties, especially southern countries. According to the IPCC report, this pathway will, the pathway we have embarked on will lead us to a three, four degrees increase by the end of the century. But with those temperatures, life on Earth will become very precarious and difficult. Even a three degree temperature rise would uh, place us in a very, very difficult situation. Land fertility would uh, drop, and the yield from the uh, land being cultivated now to provide food will be decreased, and we would be in a difficult situation to feed 9 billion inhabitants, which is the population we're expecting for 2050. On this slide, we see the way in which the main northern hemisphere countries are to blame for greenhouse effect gas emissions, especially CO2. Until recently, regarding the uh, yearly flow, the greatest polluter were the United States, but recently China took the lead, and China is today the main polluting country, followed by the United States, uh, Europe with 28 members, India. And we see on the United States that uh, the United States were the main uh, polluter in terms of stock. And by stock, I mean the quantity of gases accumulated in the atmosphere, but they have recently been overtaken. Now, the origin of the problem is divided. The origin is in the northern countries, whereas the victims are in the southern countries which leads us to a major problem in international negotiations when countries attempt to find an agreement. Southern countries, justifiably so, blame northern countries for being responsible for the problem and also tell them that they have enough money to make efforts to mitigate the greenhouse effect gas emissions, whereas the 
victims are the southern countries. Some uh, organizations have uh, attempted to uh, fund infrastructures in order to help southern countries address the problems uh, and face the dangers. The French Development Agency for more than 10 years has helped fund projects to, in order to uh, reduce greenhouse effect gases and help southern countries adjust to the uh, extreme uh, climatic events they are facing. Over the last 10 years, the uh, total volume of funds provided was more than 15 billion euros, which is a huge sum, and half of the projects have had a positive impact on the climate. On the slide, you see the breakdown of the various uh, industries uh, targeted by the uh, funds, the AFD project. Fortunately, AFD is not alone. It is part of a club called IDFC, International Development Finance Club, with 22 members, total balance sheet 2,000 billion euros, the equivalent of the French GP, or also the equivalent of uh, the balance sheet of a bank like BNP Paribas. And uh, this club uh, for years now has been trying to help certain countries fund their efforts to mitigate the climate uh, change. But uh, unfortunately, this is not sufficient. And the UN last year launched a uh, Green Climate Fund, which is also trying to help fund investment uh, projects uh, to mitigate the greenhouse effect gas emissions and adjust to the climate changes. The trouble is uh, the Green Climate Fund must have enough funds, equity, and also be able to borrow on the market uh, to provide sufficient funds to southern countries. And this is going to be decisive for the COP21 negotiations at the end of this year in uh, Paris. If we don't find innovating solutions to convince southern countries that northern countries are really willing to help the whole planet embark on a huge project, i.e. energy transition, most probably the southern countries will veto negotiations and will make them stall. This is the reason why the French President of the Republic launched an ad hoc committee headed by Pascal Canfin and Arnaud Grandjean in order to study innovating funding solutions to help the southern countries in their energy transition. And this will be presented during the COP21 meeting. The results will be uh, disclosed uh, in next year in the spring in order to show that there is a whole array of funding solutions, taxes on financial transitions or uh, special FME, uh, IMF rights, in order to fund these efforts and get the negotiations uh, going on a favorable, in a favorable position so that an agreement can be reached between all the members.